Secrets of a Man's Mind. Hello and welcome to the Black Swan Relationship Academy. I am Chingy, your dating and relationship expert. And I have our favorite human with me today. You know who he is. We love him. We get excited when we see him. He's the godfather of the Black Swan Relationship Academy. And this is my darling, darling friend, man of God, Bishop R.C. Blakes. Welcome, Bishop. <laughs> I am so glad to be here. You know, you know how Lisa and I love you. You do know that, right? I do. I know. She gave me a little bit of a wave before she went gardening. Bless her heart. <laughs> love you. We I love, love you. that woman. I love you both so much. Thank you so, so much for coming back. It's been a while. We were having a chit chat earlier. It's been a while, but it's so good because God has been doing something in both of us which is fantastic so bishop i don't i know everybody's gagging to hear about the secrets of a man's mind which is uh, an event i had last weekend but i really want to build on it because i think it's so powerful and there's a video that you did um i think not too long ago which was you know are you the woman that the man wants are you you know you want the, i don't know what the title was but it was around that um you know are you the woman that for the man that you want, I think, or something along those lines. And that was really an inspiration for me, and I'm sure everybody who watched it loved it. So I decided that what we're going to do, the secrets of a man's mind, is really break down types of men, because I think women think all men are the same, right? And whilst there's a fundamental kind of commonality, um, there's a specific kind of man. So if you want to be with a classical man, if you want to really attract, keep, and really be loved and cherished by a classical man then you've got to know him you've got to know his thoughts the way he moves the way he lives his best life so the question i have for you to kick it all off bishop is i've heard you use this term classical man prior to that i'd never heard anyone use it so who better than yourself to define the classical man who is the classical man well you know there's this idea um, especially in the, in the manosphere, I think they call it, mm -hmm. uh, that there are basically two types of men and both of them are toxic. And that is the, um, the pimp, so to speak, the, the player. And then there's the simp, the little weakling that uh, women can manage and maneuver. The, the, the simp is enslaved by the domineering woman. The pimp enslaves the woman. Both guys are toxic, and so the world presents this idea that every young man has to choose between these two uh, toxic uh, bookends. The reality is that there's another guy, and you call him the classical man. Synonym for that would be the king conscious man. Uh, some might call him the high value man. In my opinion, the high value man speaks of more than how much money he makes. It speaks of a lot of things that are working between his ears. Now, the term classical man is something that I got from my late father. Mm. He, he would always say to me, boy, I'm raising you to be a classical man. Not any of this funny stuff, this funny business that's out here. You're going to be a classical man. And here's, here's, here's some of the ideas of what a classical man is. A classical man is a man that fits the original model of manhood as the Bible outlines. And what do I mean by that? For those that are not necessarily uh, Bible people or church people, this is a guy who leads, who protects, not only does he protect physically, he protects emotionally, he protects financially, he provides, in other words, this is a guy that sacrifices. Yes. Classical man is one that has a very clear masculine role in a woman's life. Very clear masculine role in her life without dominating her. Right. The idea of masculinity today has been so uh, twisted and perverted that we associate masculinity with domination. Classical masculinity, classical manhood 
is not domination. It really is best characterized as meekness, mm. which is power and gentleness combined. Yeah. And you see a hundred pound, 120 pound woman get on top of a thousand pound horse. You see meekness on display. You see power and gentleness combined. Classical man is one that has no expectation of the woman, but to be feminine, mm. be loyal, to be his. Uh, that's my idea of what a classical man is. I love it. I love it. And I kind of had a suspicion that's what the classical man was. I heard you describe it. I was like, that's a high value masculine man by definition, by your definition. Um, that's what I think of when I think of high value or masculine. But I love the word classical because it kind of puts it all together in one word. Don't we want a classical man? <laughs> Right, so next question. This classical man who obviously has a deep spirituality, what kind of spirituality does he want from his woman? Does he want a deeper, maybe more, what, what kind of spirituality that he is looking for? Like what level of spirituality? I think, uh, I don't know if it's necessarily um, a level as much as it is a woman that um, harmonizes with him. Right. Because as you said, he's deeply, he's deeply spiritual. That does not necessarily mean that he's religious. That's right. But he, he's deeply spiritual and he does have a connection with God, with the Creator, with the Almighty. He understands that his life is driven by that connection with God. So he meets a woman that is suitable for him. When God made Eve, he made a woman that was suitable for Adam. We use the terminology, you know, being equally yoked well, in the church, or in some churches, should I say, we kind of boil that whole concept down to, well, you go to the same church I go to, or you have the same religion I, I you know, I, I'm of. And the reality is being equally yoked is about far more than that. It's, it's a woman that is connected with him, that harmonizes with him spiritually in terms of her beliefs, her faith, you know, her confidence in the creator. It's also a woman that connects with him on the soul level. His, his mind can ventilate in his conversation with this woman. This is a woman that um, possesses the presence of God on her life to a point that she's where he finds his rest she, he finds his safe place mm -hmm. somewhere in his house, his Lisa. She's somewhere out there. Well, that's my safest place in the world. You know, apart from, she's never been, she's a very praying woman. She's an intercessor, but she's never been loud and boisterous and exuberant and all of these things. But she's always had a quiet godliness about her mm -hmm. that, that's always, that has always registered, you know, with my spirit. There's something about her essence mm -hmm. that gives my, my soul ease. And I think every, every man is looking for that. Every man, Denzel Washington said it best recently. Mm -hmm. He said, every man will settle with the woman that gives him peace. Mm -hmm. and I believe that that peace that Denzel described so accurately is a peace that emanates from the woman's spirit that is connected to God. She may not be the most religious. She may not be the a Bible student. She may not be a preacher, but her spirit is connected to God. And there's something about the divine nature in her that resonates with the spirit of this man. And he knows that here is my Eve. You know, Eve was so ignited by the presence of God that when Adam first saw her, he knew who she was. He knew her role in his life. And he adored her from first sight. Yeah. He fell in love at first sight. Yeah. Absolutely. And that, that was because of that essence. I think if, if we can get, if 
we can get women to give as much attention to their inner beauty mm. as they give to their outer or the exterior, mm. my God, and understanding that your inner beauty requires that you, you really pause and reconnect with God because so many women have disconnected from God. You're in pursuit of people and, and goals and all of this stuff and you don't realize that you've unplugged from the source and you're trying to figure out why are you not resonating with the kinds of men that or the kind of man that you desire. Well, that man is plugged into God. When you reconnect, there, there will be a natural there will be a natural coming, there will be a nat natural uh, coming together of the spirit. It's spirit to spirit. It's not, it's not as superficial as the world makes it out to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what, you, what I'm hearing you say is about resonance. And what I love about what you've just said is that we can't fake that. We can't fake being of that <laughs> essence. And that essence is developed through the emphasis we put on our beauty. Absolutely. Yeah, that inner beauty. If we could focus on that, it will shape our essence. It will shape our essence and cause us to resonate at that frequency where this classical man is that we all desire. I recently, um, I was recently having this conversation with women, you know, who were trying to tell me, well, there are no, there are no more men in the world, no more good men. All of the good men are taken and all of that. And I had to, I really had to, this is where your work comes in. It, your work is so vital relative to getting women to understand femininity. Yeah. I had to remind these ladies that they're sitting and listening to me and I am a man. Yeah. You know, I'm not some honorary woman over here. I'm a whole and complete man. So when you say there are no good men in the world, well, I take offense to that because there are. The problem is that, that resonance you just got through talking about, when the woman gets to the right place, when I tune my radio down to the right station, the frequency automatically comes in. The yeah. broadcast comes through. It's not that the broadcast is no longer available. It's that I need to get my dial to the right place. And I said to these ladies, if you get to the right place, God can raise a man up for you. It doesn't matter what the, you know, the statistics say about the, the numbers and how many men are in jail or how many men are, are gay or how many men are this or that. If you get to the right place, God will literally raise men up for you. Yeah. Lisa Blakes is the first and only woman that I've ever been faithful to in my life. <laughs> and, I never had a desire to be faithful. I never thought I would ever be faithful. You know what I mean? But one day, God got a hold of my life and God gave me a vision for my life. And God just like grew me up overnight as a younger man. I was like in my latter 20s. God just grew me up overnight. But I had met a woman whose frequency was like none I had ever met before. Yeah. Her frequency was so feminine mm. that it was scary. Yeah. Her frequency made me honor her. There was a godliness about her that I respected. Yeah. And so when God took me, delivered me and raised me up, I believe with all of my heart, he raised me up for Lisa Blakes. Yes. And I just thought I get that because there's so many women who are feeling like you're hopeless, but God can take a man that's committed to, I'm going to be a player and I'm not going to leave the life. And God can break that man down. God can deliver that man, set that man free and raise that man up as an amazing classical man and a husband. But it starts with you being at or in the right place within your internals, with your internals. That is so powerful. And I'm going to share a testimony <laughs> with you on that note. <laughs> 
every man that I have been in a relationship with, whether I've met him lukewarm or not even saved sometimes, yeah. I can tell that I've left them all saved, born again and loving the Lord. And I, I say to people, your greater is he who's on the inside of you than he that is in the world. I really believe that if your spirituality is connected to God in a powerful way, you know, we sometimes have created this thing where the world is scary to the Christian, but this Christian should be scary to the world because you are the light. Where well, the light has shone in the darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it. So if you cannot convert by your being connected and the Holy Spirit can't convict because the light in you is not bright, because there is no possibility of darkness overcoming light. It's not possible. It is impossible. No. So this that you're saying, these are levels. These are levels, Bishop. Because you can't be lukewarm and iffy and unsure about yourself. And like you said earlier, it's not about religion. It, it, he could be spiritual, but he will identify something that is more light, that is greater light. And honestly, I've never... my ex-husband he was a buddhist and when i met him and i had this thing bishop god i will do anything for you but i will not marry a christian and the reason uh -huh. why, <laughs> i said that to him when i was 15 because the, the my mom's church at the time everybody there was the men but they were weirdos as far as that was concerned because they were more preoccupied with my nails than you know you you're not a, it is in africa of course you can't be a good hard-working woman if those nails or you know so i used to think oh my god i was you know i was never you know churchy enough the makeup was not a good you know, so my mom's church was one of these really strict. So I was like, God, please don't make me ever, ever marry a Christian. So, and I kind of, it was ridiculous, but I, I thought I'll do anything. So I thought he signed off on the deal. And what he literally has done is convert every single man that I've met. And I remember thinking, this is not fair, but he made me realize that if you do the work, the true work and your, your, um, I think the Bible speaks of your true religion, your, your true spirituality, which is a connection with God. It has this natural conversion because Christ is so beautiful. I, I, I dare anyone to resist him when they see him. Come on. Not some modern version, some messed up version. The true Christ, he's really irresistible because he's the essence of what love is. And I've never, ever seen anybody who is this true, pure unconditional love and so that's my testimony to that point <laughs> but it's but not you know. <laughs> the bible the bible supports what you just said and the bible says to the woman that's married to an unsaved man just live just live a certain lifestyle and he'll be converted by your lifestyle you know which goes back to what bringing life into you know, a woman bringing her life into divine order. Maybe the maybe the priority in in this season of your life is not the pursuit of 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 him or him. Maybe it's the pursuit of him. Because when you get when you get the love relationship between you and God right, what happens is God then gives you the appropriate self love. That's where self love comes from. It's when you're connected to the source. And then he teaches you how to love yourself. When a woman loves herself, now she's in position to be what you teach to be. Yeah. Feminine is just being. Mm -hmm. And and when you when you're plugged in and you love him and you fully and completely love you, now you radiate and you 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 resonate and you attract certain kinds of men that are, as you put it on that level you don't have to do a song and dance for these guys you don't have to perform they just want you to be and your being changes everything about them you know like i i'm looking out of my window and i'm looking at trees and the trees aren't saying anything they're just standing there and being they're they're making the air healthy they're providing shade they're providing nests for the birds oh my goodness that is, and that's the stuff you teach. Yeah. And, and a woman has that kind of an impact on a, on a 
classical man's life in a classical man is looking for the woman that can have that kind of influence. Absolutely. Now, when this man meets a woman, how is he going to assess her in terms of his extended world? How does she need to show up to his mother, to his sisters, to his friendships? Who does she have to be? What posture? What What is he expecting? Um, I thought it very interesting question because it's so important. So many women miss it at this point. Yeah. You know? That is interested in you. Um, you have a lot to offer. Uh, but your attitude mm. is not welcoming. Mm. You know, and I think I think one of the things is at least here in the States, one of the things that is really doing women a major disservice is this uh, boss chick mindset. Mm. Mm. And, and I say that because not that women should not achieve. You know, I believe in that. Women should do big things and do all of that. But when you when it when it comes along with uh, an entitled attitude or I'm I'm more important than you, and um, so this lady should show up in this man's world with a welcoming attitude. There's a there's a pleasantness. You know, you can be a multimillionaire. Okay, let's go. Let's go back to your your land. Yeah. Um, some decades ago, there was a young lady by the name of Princess Diana. Yes. Who was royalty. Yes. And the whole world fell in love with her. Mm. If there were anyone that could have felt and behaved entitled, it would have been Diana. But Diana had such a welcoming attitude. The world fell in love with her. And the world is still enamored with her today, even more so, dare I say, than the actual bloodline royals. Yes. Because, of, because of her attitude, um, appropriate attire. Yes. Yes. You know, <laughs> when you're, when you're uh, contemplating a certain kind of man, and you see this man is at a certain level, your dress code has to be appropriate for that level. I was watching, um, I guess you would call him a high value man. He was a very successful businessman, millions of dollars or whatever, whatever. And so he engages this young lady and he sends her shopping. And she says, well, I don't, I'm not used to wearing this. He says to her, but now you are Mrs. So-and-so. Every woman needs to really think about does my attire match the scenario? And not enough ladies show up like that. You know what I mean? Um, I think another thing is the conversation. Mm. When he brings you into his circle, into his family, um, the conversation needs to be intriguing. The attitude needs to be welcoming. The attire needs to be appropriate. Um, the conversation needs to be intriguing. Every woman does herself a major justice, and I'm certain that they can. They are learning all of these things in in Black Swan. But every woman needs to learn how to conduct a conversation. How many questions to ask? How to know when you're maybe talking too much? You know, uh, you know. and then finally, matters. Mm. You know, matters. All of these things are important to certain guys that are at certain levels. The kind, the kind of man that most women want, you know, these are some of the things he's looking for. And these are the things that signals to his circle he's chosen well. Yeah. You know, he's pursuing the right kind of woman. And I love that, that especially that last piece, that signals to his circle. Because... Men do think about their circle and their status and their ranking in their circles. Absolutely. And a high ranking man could bring a woman that can lower his ranking just by her behavior, just by Absolutely. her lack of manners, just by her lack of dress code. And I was sharing that with the girls the other day that, you know, I had a gentleman say to me, look, the you know, he's approached women who are waitresses. You know, he's approached women in general because there's a mind how much they earn. It's okay. He can afford it. And he said the constant problem is he will invite them out to dinner in, a, in an elegant establishment and they come dressed like they're going to a club, you know, fits out. So now you're disqualified because you're inappropriate. You haven't learned how to 
honor his status and his rank in life. You, it's not just about being your other stuff. Your other stuff this is about that elevation we we're talking about earlier. When you work on the inner beauty, then you know you don't have to show everything because there's enough oh. internally on display anyway. You know. That's exactly. Yeah. When you think about, you know, when you think about um, a man, mm -hmm. you know, high value man, classical man, king conscious man, whatever you want to call the guy, the guy that is successful and eligible, mm -hmm. um, his his greatest asset is the quality of his woman. Mm -hmm. if, if he walks into a room where there are potential partners, clients, opportunities. And he has the right woman on his arm that's sending all of the right signals. There are people who will say yes to that guy just because of the quality of his woman. In, in the, in, within us as men, mm -hmm. the, the greatest signal to a man's intelligence and core is the woman he holds on his arm. And the woman has to understand how significant her role is. Now, you may not be comfortable with this change of attire, but if this is the level of man that you want to live the rest of your life with, we got to go to the store. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you got to go to the store. And you may be accustomed, you may call yourself, well, I'm an introvert. Well, you're going to be an introvert that's going to learn how to act like an extrovert today because you're going to have to know how to show up in a room and smile and say hello and good evening. How are you? Now, you, you may move along so that you don't have to get lost in a major cop, but you're going to have to learn these things. Sometimes I'm sitting in situations I'm so, I'm so uh, urban and ghetto. <laughs> That there are times I'm sitting in these fancy, fanciful affairs and I have to literally pull out my phone to remind myself what fork is what. You know, ah. because that is where knowing these things are important. Yeah. And and so it is, you know, when a man when a man is is um, choosing and bringing you, should I say, into his circle, yeah. that a woman has some clue about some of these things. Love it. Love it. I love, I love every piece of that, especially the introvert having, because I had a client who was like, it's not my nature. I don't want to do it. But she's dating this man who has business partners and needs her to be sociable, even if it's not her nature. And this became a bit of a thing and I had to let her know, but that's part of the package because that's how you get this man that treats you so amazingly and makes sure he provides for you. And he, you know, spoils you. He gets to do that through this and he's proud to take you. So thank goodness she was a very elegant young lady, but her, she didn't want to come out of her introvertedness, but we got her sorted bishop. But that is so powerful because I think there's this sense of, I won't change myself or any man kind of oh. scenario, but you want that guy. That's what happens here. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Love it. So tell us a little bit about his emotional core needs. What do you think would be... Some of his emotional core needs. Oh, that's easy. <laughs> uh, respect. Yeah. You know, I think respect, I think him feeling a sense of respect. Yes. Um, and you understanding as a woman, you understanding that he is hypersensitive to respect. Yes. So he senses that anything is disrespectful. Um, he's probably going to have a conversation about it. Yes. Uh, at that point, it's not about if you intended to be disrespectful or not. It's about understanding whatever you did and how it made him feel. If you want, if you want a man to stay motivated and if you want to keep him on track, you have to always make certain that he feels respected. Yes. In masculine classical man has to feel respected um he's bringing too much he's giving too much he's sacrificing too much and his very masculine nature does not allow him to function well in an environment where he's disrespected yeah. you know if he's disres if he feels disrespected by men he can get aggressive 
Mm. And if he does get aggressive, he yeah. can't do that with his woman. Yeah. So if he's feeling disrespected by his woman, he's probably going to go into a shell. You know it. You feel the you feel the, the, the temperature of the house change. And then he's eventually going to have a conversation. But if a woman makes a man know that he's respected, he meets a woman that uh, he has no question about her loyalty. Yes. You know, a man is looking, and these are what? These are subsurface issues. These are things that, you know, are be beneath the superficial. This is how a woman that, you know, whatever your scale of beauty is, you know, I believe beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but the reality is the world has these various scales. Whatever your scale of beauty is, this is how a woman that the world may say is a 10 loses a man to a woman that the world says is a 5 or a 6. Mm. It's because she has these internal uh, attributes that bring him back to what we talked about earlier, a place of rest. A man will always settle with the woman that gives him rest. She has to be a woman that meets his need to feel respected. He needs to feel that she's loyal. Admiration. I don't know how it is over there, you know, on the other side of the pond, but over here, cheerleaders are big. In the in the college, in the football stadiums, cheerleaders are big. All of the boys in the school want to date the cheerleader because she's the one that's cheering and rooting for her. when they do something great she's the one that's vocal and she's admiring them and all the boys want the cheerleader yes well that's a psychological clue to how a woman really captivates a man mm. you know a man should not have to leave out of his house to be told you're great yeah. you're amazing yeah but how many women are are trained you know that uh, you don't need to be telling a man it's all every day. Uh, you know, why you have to uh, just build him up all the time? Well, if if this man is providing, protecting, loving, caring for you, mm. and then finally a man needs to know that he's the priority. Prioritization. So we go from respect to loyalty to admiration. The priority. Man has to feel that he is, he has to know he's the priority in your life. He can't feel like he's on equal plane with your, with your friends or, mm -hmm. you know, your church mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. has to, has to feel like he's the priority. Wow. Bishop, you always bring it. Because <laughs> literally I was sharing this at the most across this past, um, uh, this weekend gone. And I missed our priority though. So thank you for that. And I yes. love your, um, your example of admiration. It's, you know, it's, as a woman, I find it difficult to explain to women how much this means. So sometimes I come across like I'm being a pick me, right? Just please tell him. <laughs> I always say they need that men need this, especially if they're men of worth and men of substance. Um, and, you know, I love that you kind of gave that connection because yes, here on this side of the pond, cheerleading is not that big thing. I don't believe, I don't think I've seen it. We don't have them at our football matches and football is quite big, but I knew it was a big thing in the U S never quite understood other than the fact that they're great dancers and happy people, <laughs> but that makes perfect sense absolutely yeah. makes sense this need for validation and um and, and admiration in a healthy way because i think sometimes when we say men need to be validated it seems so like oh they, you're, they're so toxic they don't they need women but it's not about that <laughs> it's about the way that masculine energy is wired it's so achievement focused it's so you know and, and it's a motivation you want the best from your man motivate him in the direction that will give you the best i love that and i loved priority for sure um i think i missed that one as well so thank you for adding that <laughs> to the conversation because i don't think i think women are so longing for time and attention from a man that they don't actually believe that he wants the same. He wants to be a priority to you. He doesn't want to feel second rate. Love, love, love that. Can you tell us something about his fears in a relationship? Uh, I think a man's, 
I think the reason, okay, I think the reason a man uh, pulls back before he goes all in is because we as men have a massive fear of being dishonored. We have a massive fear. And when I say dishonored, um, when a man really loves a woman, uh, his, in, with his heart, with his soul, his greatest fear is that she's going to cheat on him. Mm-hmm. Men cannot, um, men cannot really process cheating, his woman cheating on him. I, there's something different. I wish I were, you know, a mental health professional. I would be able to articulate this better. But there's something different that happens in the soul of a man when he actually loves a woman and she cheats on him. Um, it's, it's a different level of pain. And, and it's really what drives many men to become so toxic and to, you know, prevent themselves from ever really delving into intimate relationships with women that go anywhere beyond sex. It's because men are fearful that if I really give my heart, it's going to get crushed. So there's this fear of dishonor. There's um, fear of being dominated. Society says, well, if you love a woman too much and if you give too much of yourself to a woman, she's going to dominate you and you're going to become a little simp. You're going to become a little puppet in her hands. You're going to become putty in her hands. And and then there's this big fear of rejection. Mm. You know, I think the the fear of rejection. These are things. These are these are private fears that we have as men that we never really talk about, and women don't really understand why it's so hard for a man to commit to a relationship. Why is it that a man just wants to bring a relationship to a sexual level, and then he goes to her, he disappears, he falls away, he acted like he was completely in love. Well, he's afraid that if I go all the way. She's going to cheat on me. She's going to dishonor me. And I don't know how I'm going to recover from that. How is my masculine soul going to mend? He's fearful of, well, if if I, if I really fall in love with her, she's going to, she's going to dominate me and turn me into a puppet. And then many, many brothers are um, apprehensive about even approaching women for the fear of rejection that somehow she'll, she'll disapprove and she, she won't, um, she won't feel him or respect him or uh, appreciate him like that. So these, I think, are, I think, three dominant fears. The fear of dishonor or cheating, fear of de- being dominated, and the fear of rejection. So when a woman says, man, I don't want you anyway, that's, that's a different ball game. That's a different ball game. Enough said. I... Thank you. <laughs> and I, I, I just feel like there's so little to add to that because, again, it's like you were at this, you should, should have just had you at the masterclass, say, kick two, two birds with one stone, but this is stuff that I labor to explain, and I'm so grateful that you've said it with no prompting because it's the truth. Fantastic. <laughs> Uh, the next thing is what does he desire I was going to ask you about what he wants in a wife or a woman I'm not sure if you've got anything else to add because I think you've said quite a lot but if you've got anything else to add in terms of when he's choosing a wife mm-hmm. what are you specifically looking for Some things I would add to that probably are um, the Bible says it that the, the role of, of the woman in the life of the man the wife in the life of the husband is to help him Mm. Uh, when you have a when you have a when you have a great man, mm-hmm. he needs a lot of help, and there's a reason women's minds work differently than ours. You you all can literally multitask, and in my opinion, this is just my opinion. You're smarter than we are, and so when a man is thinking about choosing a wife, he's thinking about a woman that can help him. Not a woman that can make him, but a woman that can help him. He should already have his life in motion, his vision in place, and you know, achieving and accomplishing certain things. But he needs a woman 
he desires a woman, if he's smart, that's more than I can be. Yeah. He needs a woman to literally partner with. And she brings, she can bring something to the table that can enhance everything that he is. And possibly whatever he has enhances what she has. And the, the two bring, bring all of this together. Then this is something that I think a lot of women overlook and undervalue. It's the power of being able to sit with him and have conversation around ideas. Mm-hmm. There, should, there should be a think tank energy in the between the two of you. If 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 your man can ride in the car with you for an hour and process ideas and things that he's thinking about and you can fertilize some of that or you can shift some of that and show him another way um, it brings the relationship to a whole different level you know it, it, a man has to have a woman that he can partner with for life there are aspects of my life that I get all of the credit for and quite honestly I'm nothing but the face Lisa Lisa's behind the scenes doing all of this. And yet I don't think getting the credit is because I I chose a woman when I married Lisa. I did not marry Lisa for her beauty. I had I had, had a lot of beautiful women. Yeah. God's making beautiful women every day. He <laughs> sure is. Yes, being a beautiful woman does not really make me that special. Beautiful women are being created every day. I married Lisa because I knew who I was. I knew where I was going in life. And I married a woman that was spiritually, intellectually suitable for my future. Mm. And proven to be everything I imagined her to be in terms of being a partner. And when a man is looking for a wife, you know, he wants all of the other superficial stuff. But at the end of the day, he needs somebody that can help him. And if if you look at a man's life and you can't figure out where you can help him, you might need to pray about that. If you can't be a helpful man, when the Bible says your role is to be a help, if you can't figure out where you can help this guy, you might need to reconsider that. I agree 100%. And, you know, it's really interesting, Bishop, because like you said, she was the first woman that you were committed to. But even with that, you still have the fortitude, the wherewithal, the insight to know she's different. She can help me. She can help me. With everything else. You know, you, you... so this tells me that this information is on a very spiritual level. Yes. It, it's so, it's such a strong signal to a man who is ready to marry. This woman is going to help me to become, to actualize, to become everything that I'm supposed to do. And you have to be training yourself prior to be out meet, to be somebody who is an asset in a man's life. You know, and I think all, some of us are so happy with being liabilities. You know, uh, we're happy being (sighs) liabilities is the only word that comes to mind. And thinking that the man should help us and fix our finances and fix our mess when really we are to be an asset. Absolutely. You know, this this big thing now um, about the high value man, six figures, six feet. Well, I missed the six feet by inch and a half, uh, you know, connected and all of these kinds of things. Um, What about a high value couple? What about a man becoming his best version in partnership with the right woman? Love that. You know, when Lisa and I got, got married, mind you, I knew in my mind where I was going. I knew who I was and she knew who I was. And I was working towards it. But she made more money than I made when we got married. And it didn't take long for she and I to be married before things just started. The Bible says a man that finds a wife finds the favor of God. Things just started escalating and growing and multiplying 
And before long, I was able to say to her, when our first uh, daughter, Rachel, was born, I was able to say to her, think about, you know, stepping away from your career for a minute just to raise Rachel until she gets to a point where she can talk. Mm. Because I don't want to put in the care of others and she can't express what's happening. Mm. Well, that's been 26 years now ago. <laughs> and, and together, we have become the high value couple. You know, it was never, well, what can I get from him or what can I take from her? It was the two of us recognizing the value each of us brought to the table. The main thing I had to bring to the table was vision and motivation. And I had to have a work ethic. And I brought those things to the table. She brought brilliance that has helped me to exponentially grow beyond anything I ever would have done apart from her. Wow. Uh, what, is he, what does he desire but is afraid to ask for? Oh, hmm. Let me see, I wrote some things here. Mm -hmm. He desires that a woman, oh, uh, can I say this? Please do. We, we discuss everything out here. <laughs> what does he desire that he's afraid to ask for? Well, let's talk about why he's afraid to ask, first of all. Mm -hmm. A man that will go out to the street and will brawl with a 300 pound thug on the street, will come home to a 120 pound wife and will be afraid of her. Is he literally afraid of her? Or is it a, is it a level, a dimension of respect he has for her that makes him apprehensive about saying or doing anything that might hurt her heart? The main focus of a masculine man is to be the caretaker of his woman's heart. Mm. So there are things that women should probably have discussions about that men may never talk about, especially if he loves you, because he's going to avoid hurting your feelings like the plague. Why? Right. One of those things would be that a woman does not, or should I say that a woman does her best at whatever age, whatever level to maintain physical attractiveness. Mm. Mm -hmm. 100%. He, he, he's, he's afraid to say to you, I think you're letting some things fall apart. <laughs> you can preach that. <laughs> well, your man is afraid to say that to you. He's afraid to say, I, I think you're letting some things fall apart unnecessarily. We can't complain about, well, you know, I've gained, I'm gaining weight and I can't control it. And at the same time, we have a bucket of ice cream in front of us. <laughs> what he's thinking, but he'll never say, well, you know, you may need to put the ice cream down. <laughs> he'll never say that. I can't, honestly, I can't believe I'm saying it right now, but he'll never say it. But since I'm, since I'm speaking for him or them, I can say it. Um, he, he'll be afraid. Uh, your man will think it, but he'll be afraid to say to you, you need to be more sexually engaged. Mm. You, you know, you, you're, you're uh, romantically, you've become romantically lethargic, boring. Mm. And I, I need you to, he doesn't know how to say that because he doesn't know how that's going to make you feel. He, do, he doesn't know if he says that to you, are you going to now view him as not uh, viewing you as attractive or because it has nothing to do with his love for you. It's just his, his masculine need as a, as a faithful man to have everything he needs in his woman. So he, you know, another thing might be um, that she she make a big deal of his achievements. We kind of talked about that. Man doesn't know how to say to you, you know, you need to make a bigger deal over the things I accomplish. Yeah. yeah you know, um, I'm, I'm doing all of these things and I'm going out in the street. Everybody's praising me and I come home and you have nothing to say. Man, he's thinking this, but he doesn't know how to say it. And it's really impacting him. 
he's trying to figure out, you know, what's really going on because everything he does is for you, but it seems like it's not really impressing you yeah. or it's like you don't really necessarily appreciate it. And which brings me to my final point. He'll think it, but he'll be afraid to tell you that um, he feels like you're ungrateful. Oh. That you don't, that you don't really <laughs> respect the grind that he as a man, mm -hmm. you know, has to put in to make this family work. And I think that, you know, I think on both sides, men and women, we don't necessarily see one another. It's easy for me to uh, downplay Lisa's contributions as a wife and mother because I'm not a wife and mother. I don't know what it is to give birth to nobody. If I tell my children all the time, if y'all were depending on me to bring you into the world, none of y'all would be here. You know, at the same time, she doesn't know what it is to have to be the sole provider for home and to educate your children in the best of schools, pay for all of that. Do anything and everything you want to do. Be the provider. Be the protector. And so, you know, every now and then my wife says to me, Bay, I just want you to know you're a great husband. Mm. You're an amazing father. Yeah. You know, my grandchildren will call me. And I know she's like calling them. And so I'm calling your grandfather. Yeah. I'll call you. I'll call. <laughs> well, every, every man needs that. But I couldn't articulate that to her if she were not wise enough to know this is a need that I have as her husband. I love that. And I love that the women who are married in relationships can really take that and change their relationships. And Bishop, it might seem to whoever's listening that it's just a small thing, but I have seen marriages turn completely around over just that one, those points you've just made in this section because there's nothing like your partner knowing that you care about the things he's afraid to ask for, especially when they're the things. Wow. You know, I think both of us from both sides, we have these times where we say, I shouldn't have to tell you that. Yes. You know, you should know these things. Yes. Why is that? It's because love always pays attention. Yes. If, if a person loves you, they learn you. Hmm. <laughs> You can read my energy and you can tell if I'm pleased or not. Yeah. And so, you know, it goes both ways because we could take and flip this conversation and there are things that the woman is afraid to say to the man. But we're talking about, you know. I'm right. <laughs> yeah. Thank Absolutely. you for that. And I'm so grateful that you've been candid. What is his position on money and women? What does he feel, you know, does he... Is he bothered by how much money a woman makes? Does he want a woman to make a little bit more money? What What's really the deal with a classical man when it comes to money and women? Well, a classical man is a masculine man. He's not a feminine man. And a masculine man does not care what kind of money a woman makes. Yay. Um, as I said, it's not, a, it's, not a, it's not an issue for a classical man. Why is that? It's because the classical man views himself as the provider, period, 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 period. He's not intimidated by the money his woman may make. He's not dissuaded because she does not make money. Uh, I think if we were to be completely honest, uh, we probably prefer a woman that's not preoccupied with a whole lot of other things and can give herself solely and completely to the, to the marriage and the family. But then at the same time, we appreciate a woman that's a go-getter. We support her in whatever her role is. But the money part does not matter to us. We don't care how much money you make. When, when Lisa and I got married, she made more money than me. Wow. I never felt like I wasn't the man. I was the man in the house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was the man in that house. Lisa would go and I'd have my little money over here and she'd bring out her money over there. <laughs> and you know, when it came down to when it came down to the roles, it was clear. This he's the he's the man, I'm the woman, and we function like that. And you know, any man that is is uh, really a classical man, you know, sometimes modern women think that they can impress a man by, I make $300,000 a year. I make a half a million a year. 
that's great. And I want to support you in whatever it is you want to do. But that's extra. Yes. Because for me, I'm the provider. I'm not going to even select a woman that I can't provide for. That's, a, that's the way a classical man thinks. I am the provider. So if you make money or not, it's fine. I'm the provider. Love it. And, yeah. <laughs> We're not having all these issues about about money and all of this, and you know. I love when that. You, when I love you that. date, should you uh, you know pay for dinner and all of this kind of thing? We're having none of that. None of that. <laughs> I love that. I love that, and this is a conversation I've been having a lot with some of my black swans who are very successful, um, and I think a lot of women who have become successful feel this way and i think we were discussing that about some of the ladies in your in your community as well i need to say this while i'm remembering it of course one of the greatest ways um very successful women turn off men that would be um suitable men that could accommodate them is when she leads with her money her accomplishments we don't care about that. That's what that's what men do when we get together, as you guys might call, in the pub. Yes. We, sit, we we measure our manhood by how much money I made and what my title is and how big my company is. That's what dudes do. Yeah. When a woman enters into an initial interaction with a man and she's leading with, I make this and this is my title subconsciously he begins to view her as um you know another guy competitive because he's not leading from her essence we don't need to know all that we don't care anything about that we can talk about that later okay so um what are his judgments on a woman's history her body count if you like the amount of men she slept with um, or sexual traumas, maybe she was molested or raped as a child. What would a lot of women fear that they'll be judged? Uh, maybe they are being judged. What? How does a classical man? What's his position on her sexual history? Good, bad, or indifferent? I'd love your comment on that. Well, you know, initially we said that a classical man is uh, the kind of man that is in the uh, in line with God's original design. For, for man, right? So it's in his nature, uh, the, it's in the nature of the classical masculine man to protect, defend, repair womanhood. Yeah. So a classical man, wherever a woman is broken, his heart goes out. He has to really be careful because he's, he's hypersensitive to women that are broken. Now, when he finds a woman that he loves and he thinks that there's a future, her traumas, her mistakes, none of these things will dissuade him. In fact, about it, it um, in, it endears her. I don't know if that's the word I want to use, but it, it brings about a stronger bonding, actually, because now he feels responsible to repair the damage that some other generation of men yeah. created. Mm. And often ask me, Bishop, why do you spend so much time talking to these women? It's because I know the trauma that we as men have created in these women. And as a classical man, it is my innate inclination yeah. to come to the aid and the rescue of broken womanhood. So when you talk about a man that may be interested in you. If he cannot handle your history and your trauma, he is not broad enough to handle your life. He's not the one. Wow. You know, I, and I come to this through what? Personal experience. People hear me talk about Lisa and our relationship and our marriage and what have you. Well, Lisa had been sexually abused as a child. Incestuous. Mm. Her father and her uncles. So imagine Lisa growing up with that kind of trauma, did not know how to trust, did not trust, no sense of um, intimacy, you know, none of that. Just, you know, a, a horrid 
perspective on masculinity in men. Mm. When I when I saw this jewel and I came to understand the journey she had taken, it did not push me away from her. It drew me closer to her and I became what? Protective. I became intentional about my love for her. So no woman needs to feel that because you've gone through these things or you've had these experiences or you've made a mistake that somehow this is going to push a classical man away from you. It'll it'll endear, it'll bring you closer together actually. Wow. I actually believe you. I do. <laughs> and I and I want everybody listening to this to truly believe it because it is true. It is absolutely true. Last but absolutely not least because you have shared some serious gem gemonology we've got <laughs> going on here. This is something that I really think really is so, so, so important. So the last but not least is, how does he expect his woman to handle conflict with him? Wow. Mm. That's good. And, and mind you, you're asking this of a man that's married to a, a Jamaican woman. <laughs> we have too much to accomplish. Our energy is too important. To have stuff on your mind and allow the energy to shift in the house for some length of time. Mm -hmm. Let's deal with this immediately. Let's create some rules for engagement. Mm -hmm. and But let's deal with this immediately. The Bible says, don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. Mm -hmm. Because you give place to the enemy. You give place to the devil. So if there's something I've said or done that rubs you the wrong way or offends you, let's deal with it immediately. Um, secondly, respectfully. Mm. You know, there's certain language we're just not going to use. Lisa and I have had full-blown arguments in the church, in front of the congregation, and nobody understood that we were actually <laughs> up. Wow. That we were up. We were actually in an argument sitting in front of the congregation because the way, and watch this, that is not only how we do that publicly, mm -hmm. that's how we handle our disagreements privately. Wow. This home we're going to use, there's language we will never use. Come on now. The children and the grandchildren can be moving about and we can have a full blown argument. They'll never know nothing. Other than that, I feel nothing but love between these two people. It needs to be immediate. It needs to be respectful. No threats or ultimatums. Mm. Because when you start doing that to a masculine, classical man or a man, should I say, if he does that to a high value woman, people like that don't respond well to threats and ultimatums. They'll make you live it out. Yeah. And so when you start doing that, you're opening the door for catastrophe. So yeah. deal, let's deal with it immediately. Let's, let's deal with it respectfully. Let's make certain we deal with certain things privately. Mm. Mm. Our issues should not be in the ears of your mama, my mama, siblings, my siblings, your friends, my friends, your work people, my work people. The church people, all of these folk in the middle of our business. This is childish. This is immature. This is beneath who we are and how we must function. So it has to be private. There are things that Lisa and I have dealt with. Nobody knows anything about our business. You know, we've, we've handled our stuff privately. So, and then finally, it needs to be diplomatically. There has to be give and take. You know, I have to come to the table and I have to respect the fact that she's a strong, independent woman. Yeah. She has to respect the fact that I'm a keen, conscious man. But it's the respect we have for one another that gives each of us the power to be diplomatic in the proceedings. And the goal is never for me to win or for her to win. It's for us to win. What's best for us? Mm -hmm. If I was wrong, I'm man enough to say, I was wrong. If she was wrong, 
<laughs> She's woman enough to say you were wrong. <laughs> no, nah, she'll say I was wrong too. But you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> what you just said there in the end is you as a classical man a man enough to own it. And a lot of women would be like, oh, the men that just out, these men don't own it, then he's not a classical man. Because a classical man is a masculine man who doesn't want to hurt your feelings. And if he's really done something wrong, he's going to own it. And he's going to make a smart woman, he's going to make him own her stuff too. <laughs> I'm sure we got, we got that the last bit, but <laughs> 100%. It takes um, a classical man to own his stuff. And to even have those conversations, I think, Bishop, sometimes as women, we're afraid to have those conversations because not every man can handle a woman's truth or a woman's offense, you know, without gaslighting, without making it more, turning it into drama. So a lot of women feel they can't, but this is one of the biggest signs is that self-ownership as a classical man where she knows she can deal with it immediately, respectfully. And this also speaks of your... Um, of the woman's caliber absolutely and her own sense of inner self-respect and i love that you two can have an argument in front of everybody and i totally get that because this is about total self-respect and an honoring of your sacred relationship i love it <laughs> thank you so much. there's something i learned from you um which is powerful and i believe it I learned this from you, even if you don't realize I learned it from you. Wow. One of the greatest, um, in my opinion, one of the greatest expressions of femininity would be boundaries. And when people cross those boundaries, having your voice to articulate that fact. And that, that does not discontinue after, you, you know, you, you get a, a husband or a significant other. I think... A masculine man respects a woman that is going to sound the alarm. You're crossing boundaries. Time out. Let's talk about this. And so, yeah, I learned that from you. You're brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> it's always an honor to be able to teach the great bishop something. <laughs> well, I learn something from you all the time. I love what God is doing with us. I am so grateful always to spend time with you. It's so soul satisfying, Bishop. So soul satisfying. And I know that the black swans absolutely adore you. They just, I think we're actually the same family because I swear every time I go on a discovery call, oh, I'm so good. And I think we literally have the same family. So I am so, so blessed to, to have you. Thank you so much for coming and spending time with us. And I'm going to leave this video exactly the way it is. Really? So everybody can add, well, we'll cut out, you know, the little bits. But we're leaving all the content in for as long as it is because I really feel like it's meat and it's gravy and it's potatoes and it's needed. Thank you so much. Take care. Take care. You know I love you. I love you. Thank you for having me. You're so welcome. So we better say goodbye to the swans. Swans, you want to say yeah. goodbye to Chelsea Blake? <laughs> I love you all. I love you. Goodbye. God Thank bless you. Take care now. Bye-bye now.